as we discussed in the previous class that it is not always true that one would have an isentropic flow or one may even think of an isentropic flow. The isentropic flow is something which is not a reality in any way, but real flows in certain cases may resemble very close to isentropic flows. But if you see that uh, under certain cases even that approximation of isentropic flow will not work. When it will not work? It will not work when there is an abrupt discontinuity in the flow. So, how that abrupt discontinuity may be possible? Let us take an example. Let us say that there is some uh, aircraft which is moving with a very high speed. So, when it is moving with a very high speed, it is uh, say moving with a supersonic speed and therefore, all the disturbances are confined within the Mach cone. So, outside the Mach cone, the disturbance is not felt. So, let us say that you have sort of this as an as a bounding envelope within which the disturbance is there. Now, if you consider the streamlines which are there in the upstream, they are not still feeling the presence of this disturbance because the disturbance cannot propagate to all points. Now, suddenly when these come and encounter this point of or this location of discontinuity, then they will feel the presence of the disturbance and therefore, there will be an abrupt change in properties. So, such abrupt change in properties will be possible here with a condition that on one side it is supersonic flow and on another side what will happen we will see, we, we are not predicting that it is either subsonic or supersonic or whatever, but one important thing we can predict that there may be a sharp discontinuity. So, that on one side it is sort of the disturbance is felt because of the supersonic nature of the flow, on another side the disturbance is not felt so to say. And uh, that is an extreme example, but you may also have such discontinuities not that on one side disturbance is totally felt, on another side the disturbance is not at all felt, but there is a sharp discontinuity across that, which means that there will be an abrupt change in Mach number across that. The question will be that uh, what is the length or what is the thickness over which this discontinuity occurs, it is typically a few molecular mean free paths. So, roughly like uh, of the order of 0 0.1 micron like that. So, it is uh, for all macroscopic calculations, it is as if like a sharp front over which this uh, discontinuity in the flow properties is going to be there. We will see that mathematically we might initially have possibilities of several types of discontinuities, but from the second law of thermodynamics we will try to predict that some of these discontinuities are feasible and some of these discontinuities are not feasible. But we have to first appreciate that there is a possibility of such discontinuity in a flow. Typically in a supersonic flow we may visualize that why such a discontinuity might occur. The second thing is that when the discontinuity is occurring, what is the front over which the discontinuity is occurring? The front over which the discontinuity is occurring, this, this type of discontinuity is known as a shock. So, when you have the front over the discontinuity that is occurring, that front may not be oriented in a direction normal to the direction of the flow. But there are special cases when the front of the discontinuity is oriented in a direction perpendicular to the direction of the flow and in such a case it is known as a normal shock. If the front of the shock is oriented at an oblique angle with respect to the direction of the flow, then that is known as an oblique shock. So, in the purview of this course we have only normal shock, so we will be discussing only the special type of shock where the shock front is perpendicular to the direction of the flow. So, let us take up that case known as normal shock. So, when you have a normal shock, let us say that this is the shock front. So, what we are having? We are having a discontinuity in properties across the shock front. So, let us say on one side the pressure is P1, the temperature is T1, maybe the velocity is U1, the Mach number is M1, another side P2, T2, 
u 2 m 2 even you may write the density rho 1 rho 2 like that. So, there is a change in property. One important thing we should keep in mind that we also considered a wave type of motion a weak wave type of motion where there was some discontinuity across the two ends on the front. What is the difference between that and the shock wave? The big difference is there the discontinuity was only infinitesimal that is if the pressure here was p maybe here was p plus dp like that. So, that was a differential change or so to say a smooth change here it is an abrupt change. So, difference between p 1 and p 2 is not differential difference between m 1 and m 2 is not differential and that is why these are sharp discontinuities or jump discontinuities. So, when you have such jump discontinuities occurring then these discontinuities occurring at a very rapid rate. So, there is a ra rapid change in the flow properties and when there is such a rapid change it is the change is taking place over a very thin region. So, that we may consider it to be adiabatic because there is insufficient time to have a opportunity of heat transfer during the process, but because the process is very fast it is no more reversible process. Therefore, it may be approximated as an irreversible and adiabatic process. So, if you have it as an irreversible process you cannot apply isentropic flow conditions to relate m 1, m 2, u 1, u 2, t 1, t 2, p 1, p 2 like that and that is why we have to make a separate analysis for the shock. So, this is the motivation of having a separate analysis for the shock despite having the well known property relationships for the isentropic flows. Now, uh, let us say that we want to apply our basic equations. So, the basic equations are still valid. So, you have for, for example, the continuity equation remember these are one dimensional flows. So, if A is the area of the shock front then you have rho 1 a 1 u 1 is equal to rho 2 a 2 u 2. A 1 and a 2 are the same and you may relate rho 1 with p 1 and t 1. It is important to eliminate one of the variables out of p t and rho by using the equation of state. So, you can write this as p 1 by r t 1 u 1 is equal to p 2 by r t 2 u 2. So, this one we will keep in mind. Of course, u 2 by u 1 you may express in terms of the Mach number and the temperature. So, uh, you can also write u 2 by u 1 as m 2 by m 1 square root of t 2 by t 1 because u is m into c, c is square root of gamma r t. See we are writing this with an understanding that in the upstream of the shock and in the downstream of the shock separately we are using isentropic considerations that we have to keep in mind, but in between the upstream and the downstream the flow is not isentropic. So, this is what we get from the continuity equation then maybe momentum equation. Momentum equation, so the resultant force that acts on the control volume P 1 minus P 2 into A is equal to m dot into u 2 minus u 1. m dot is rho into a into u. So, in place of m dot you can write rho, rho 1 a u 1 or rho 2 a u 2 either way and then if a gets cancelled from both sides it is possible to write p 1 minus p 2 is equal to rho 2 u 2 square minus rho 1 u 1 square. Okay. Now, in place of rho you write p by r t. So, p 2 by 
r t 2 in place of u square it is m square into gamma r t right. So, r into t gets cancelled out. So, this term becomes gamma into p 2 into m 2 square I mean the other term therefore, will be p 1 m 1 square into gamma right. So, from here you can write p 1 into 1 plus gamma m 1 square is equal to p 2 into 1 plus gamma m 2 square. So, from this we have an expression or relationship between p 1 and p 2 which is solely expressed in terms of the Mach numbers at 1 and 2. So, we will keep this equation in mind. Let us say this is equation number 1, this is equation number 2, this is equation number 3. The next important equation is the energy equation. So, let us see that what we get out of the energy equation. Energy equation will give what? T 1 plus C p into T 1 plus U 1 square by 2 is equal to C p into T 2 plus U 2 square by 2. Remember this is adiabatic and that is good enough this is first law of thermodynamics we do not require any reversible or irreversible condition here. So, you have C p into T 1 plus in place of u 1 square we will be using the expression of the Mach number that is u 1 square is m 1 square gamma r t 1 by 2 ok. you can write C p in terms of gamma and r. So, that is gamma by gamma by gamma minus 1 into r right. So, this will become gamma by gamma minus 1 into r this is gamma by gamma minus 1 into r. So, gamma into r will cancel. So, you will have T 1 into 1 by gamma minus 1 plus m 1 square by 2 is equal to T 2 into 1 by gamma minus 1 plus m 2 square by 2. Okay. So, let us be careful uh, that there is no algebraic mistake because uh, we required these uh, calculations for some analysis subsequently. <coughs> so, uh, we are able to write T 1 by T 2 also in principle as a function of M 1 and M 2 just like what we could do for P 1 by P 2 and therefore, rho 1 by rho 2 also we will be able to do. And u 1 by u 2 also in terms of m 1 by m 2 because t 2 by t 1 also is expre expressible in terms of m 1 by m 2. So, let us refer to the continuity equation that is equation number 1 form. So, you have p 1 by p 2 into u 1 by u 2 is equal to t 1 by t 2 right. And u 1 by u 2 you can write in the next step from equation number 2 m 2 by m 1 square root of t 2 by sorry m 1 by this is u 1 by u 2. So, m 1 by m 2 into square root of t 2 then 
this is equal to T1 by T2. So, 1 square root of T1 by T2 gets cancelled, only 1 square root of T1 by T2 is there. Now, let us substitute from equation number 3 and equation number 4, where we have T1 by T2 and T1 by P2. So, P1 by P2 is 1 plus gamma m2 square by 1 plus gamma m1 square that into m1 by m2 is equal to square root of T1 by T2. So, 1 by Now, we have got an explicit relationship between m1 and m2. So, uh, to find out that what could be the possible relationship at the end, first of all uh, we may square these expressions. So, if we square this expression, so this is this square into m1 square by m2 square and the square roots will go away. Our objective is to solve m2 in terms of m1. If you look into this equation carefully, you will see that m1 in equal to m2 is a trivial solution, right? Because when m1 equal to m2, each of the terms clubbed will be equal to 1. So, 1 into 1 equal to 1, right? So, m1 equal to m2 is a trivial solution but not a solution for the shock because for the shock there will be a discontinuity. So, we have to look for the other solution which is different from m1 equal to m2. Just to help in the algebra, let us say let m1 square is equal to x and m2 square is equal to y and let us just expand these terms. So, we have 1 plus gamma y whole square into x into <coughs> 1 by gamma minus 1 or let us write 2 by gamma minus 1 plus x is equal to <coughs> y into 1 plus okay. So, this term square into m1 square is x into this term which is there in the denominator. So, we have multiplied by 2 just for simplicity. So, 2 by gamma minus 1 plus x. Okay. So, just check whether this is correct or not because we will proceed again from this one. We will not do a brute force algebra, but we will exploit the symmetry on the two sides. Uh, so, first of all uh, we will calculate the left hand side and we will write the right hand side just by exploiting the symmetry. See right hand side is the replacement of the left hand side with x replaced by y and y replaced by x. Okay. So, here you have x plus gamma square y square x plus 2 gamma x y into 2 by gamma minus 1 plus x. This is the left hand side. Doing one more step, <coughs> what you get? x square, okay, first x. 2 by gamma minus 1 x plus 2 
gamma square by gamma minus 1 y square x plus 4 gamma by gamma minus 1 x y these are the first three terms and the next terms are just multipliers of x. So, x square plus gamma square x square y square plus 2 gamma x square y. We can straight away write that what will be in the right hand side x will be replaced by y. So, 2 by gamma minus 1 y plus 2 gamma square by gamma minus 1 x square y plus 4 gamma by gamma minus 1 x y plus y square plus gamma square x square y square plus 2 gamma y square x. So, out of the total 6 terms that you get, there are 2 terms which are symmetrical and same in the 2 sides and therefore, they get cancelled. So, one is the term with x y, another is the term with x square y square and then you will automatically get x minus y as a common thing because x equal to y is a trivial solution that we have seen. So, if you take x minus y as common. with a 2 by gamma minus 1 as the first term. Then from the next term minus 2 gamma square by gamma minus 1 x y into x minus y plus x square minus y square plus 2 gamma x y into x minus y equal to 0. Okay. <coughs> so, if you consider that x is not equal to y, then you have 2 by gamma minus 1 minus 2 gamma square by gamma minus 1 x y plus x plus y plus 2 gamma x y equal to 0. So, from here it is possible to write y explicitly as a function of x. right? So, if you write y explicitly as a function of x, let me give you the final expression that is a very trivial word. So, y will be equal to x by x plus 2 by gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma by gamma minus 1 x minus 1. Okay. <coughs> so, when you get this expression, remember y is m 2 square and x is m 1 square. The special case that is of interest to us is the case of air. So, air is gamma equal to 1.4 example. So, for air let us write what is m 2 square by m 1 square. So, m 2 square is equal to m 1 square plus 2 by gamma is 14 by 10 minus 1, we will just write it in a fractional form. So, 
So, what will be m 2 square in terms of m 1 square? This will be 4 by 10, so 10 into 2 in the numerator 20 by 4 is 5. So, this is m 1 square by 5, m 1 square plus 5 and this will be 7 m 1 square minus 1. Now, let us try to make a plot of m 2 as a function of m 1 from this variation. So, if you make a plot of m 2 as a function of m 1 just as a sketch, one of the important observations is if you see again from this figure when m 1 from this expression when m 1 is 1 m 2 is 1. So, 1 comma 1 is a point of this variation. So, if you say this as 1 comma 1, this is 1 point and the remaining thing if you make a plot, it will be a plot like this just schematically. So, from this what we can conclude is if m 1 greater than 1, this is 1, then m 2 is less than 1. And if m 2 is, if m 1 is less than 1, then m 2 is greater than 1. Till now, whatever exercise we have done, this allows us with these two possibilities. What we will see soon that both of these possibilities are not out of these two, one is not physically permissible because we have to consider the directionality of the process. We have one process where the Mach number is going from greater than 1 to less than 1, another case going from less than 1 to greater than 1. So, these two are two different directionalities of the process. Out of this, one of the directionalities will be possible another directionality of the process will not be possible. So, what is the direction in which the process will move or is permissible to move will be dictated by the second law of thermodynamics. So, we will now consider that what is the corresponding change in entropy during this process. So, remember that when you have a change in entropy, you have a change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surroundings. So, here there is no heat transfer. So, there is no change in entropy associated with the heat transfer with the surroundings. So, you have change in entropy with the system that is just S 2 minus S 1. So, just uh, uh, to have elementary considerations on the change in entropy, the first law of thermodynamics in terms of a heat transfer. The heat transfer, remember the convention that we are having, this is heat transfer to the system as positive, work done by the system as positive, that is the sign convention that we have used. I is the internal energy, this is actually the total energy that we should have written, but we have neglected the changes in kinetic and potential energy in comparison to the internal energy, that is why it is D of internal energy. If we consider a process that is a quasi static one or a very slow one and no other effect other than the pressure and the volume changes then this becomes P d V, where V is the specific volume that is volume per unit mass. And if we consider the process to be reversible then we can write delta Q as T d S once we have written this, it is T d s equal to d i plus P d v that is valid for any process so long as we integrate this equation along a reversible path and calculate the change in property by following that path. But once the property change is calculated, it becomes independent of the path because these are exact differentials or path independent expressions. So, uh, you may express i in terms of or express enthalpy in terms of internal energy 
i plus p v. So, if you combine that what will follow is T d s equal to d h minus v d p, where v is the specific volume which is nothing but 1 by density. So, here in fluid mechanics we usually refer to that density instead of the specific volume. So, we will write 1 by rho. We are using an ideal gas with constant C p C v that is a perfect gas. So, T d s is equal to C p d t minus d p by rho. So, d s equal to C p d t by t minus. So, when you divide it by rho t uh, divide by t it is rho into t. So, you have to remember that p by rho is equal to r t. So, rho into t is p by r. So, minus r d p by p. Okay. So, you may integrate this expression and find out S 2 minus S 1 is equal to C p. Remember we are dealing with special cases with C p as constant. So, C p ln T 2 by T 1 minus R ln P 2 by P 1. T 2 by T 1 and P 2 by P 1 we may write explicitly in terms of M 2 and M 1 in this case and that also solely in terms of M 1 because M 2 may be expressed solely as a function of M 1. So, after doing all that the algebra is too complicated we will not go into the algebra, but we may see that what would be the S 2 minus S 1 as a function of M 1 plot. In principle we understand that it is very very much possible to get an expression S 2 minus X S 1 solely as a function of M 1. So, if we make that plot the plot will look something like this. it will be a plot like this. So, now if you look at this plot you can clearly see that below m 1 equal to 1 you have s 2 minus s 1 less than 0. So, this is giving rise to a total change in entropy as negative. Remember the total change in entropy is s 2 minus s 1 plus delta s of the surroundings which is 0 because it is an adiabatic flow. So, here S 2 minus S 1 is as good as S net delta S net. If there is a heat transfer with the surrounding the delta S net is S 2 minus S 1 plus delta S for the surroundings. And we have to keep in mind that our requirement is not that S 2 minus S 1 should be greater than 0, but delta S net should be greater than 0. In this case since heat transfer equal to 0 delta S net is same as S 2 minus S 1. So, from this what we can conclude is that this part is not a physically realistic part of the solution, because it is giving rise to a negative change in entropy of the system plus surroundings. Therefore, only permissible part of the solution is that, so out of the two cases that we have considered if m 1 is greater than 1 then m 2 is less than 1, this is the permissible solution. If m 1 is less than 1, then whatever it is then m 2 greater than 1 is fine, but that is not a permissible direction of the process because it violates the second law of thermodynamics. So, this is what we say that is not possible. So, from here we conclude that if we have a shock upstream of the shock the flow has to be supersonic and there should be a change in property such that it has an abrupt change from supersonic to the subsonic state. Why physically it should occur for a supersonic flow in the upstream and not a subsonic flow? If you see that if you have a supersonic flow the disturbances are not able to propagate in all directions. So, there is a limited zone over which which is the zone of action within which the disturbance is propagated. Therefore, there is an accumulation of the disturbances because the disturbances are not able to propagate in all directions at uh, a rapid rate. So, this accumulation of disturbances gets released in the form of a shock so with a abrupt discontinuity. If the disturbances were not accumulated then it would have not been possible to have such a shock with an abrupt discontinuity. So, the shock is like a release of accumulation of disturbances in supersonic flows. 
So, with this understanding we now have an idea that when you have a shock you have the change in properties, abrupt change in properties and if you look into the tables of the textbooks that you have you will find that there are tables corresponding to the shock waves and there are different types of tables depending on whether you are dealing with a normal shock or an oblique shock. So, here we are dealing with a normal shock. So, for a normal shock you will see that the tables will have the following data, the tables will have m1, m2, then uh, p2 by p1, t2 by t1, p02 by p01 like this you will have. So, m1, m2, p2 by p1, t2 by t1 all these fundamentally may be calculated from uh, uh, these considerations and also may be a2 star by a1 star. All these may be fundamentally calculated from the expression that we get. So, when you calculate this one important thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, it is possible to express all those in terms of m2 and m2 in, term in, in terms of m1. There is a change in stagnation property across the shock. So, P0 is a stagnation pressure which would have remained the same in an isentropic flow, but if it is not isentropic there will be a change in P0. So, there is a ratio P0 by P02 by P01 which is not equal to 1. So, across the shock there is a change in stagnation properties because the shock across the shock the flow is not isentropic there is an abrupt discontinuity and because of that you have difference in A star also. So, A star changes across the shock because A star is an equivalent A at which sonic condition is achieved by following an isentropic process. Across the shock it is not isentropic. So, it is a in the downstream of the shock it is a different isentropic condition and that is why you have difference in A star. So, let us stop here with this lecture, we will continue again in the next lecture, thank you.